Hey everyone, welcome back to today's class. Today we're going to talk about the demigod family tree. You can find the course notes online. Make sure to go check in and get credit. Obviously, that is totally false. <laughs> I just wanted to put this together because the last video I did, my sorcery timeline video, people said it sounded very academic. So I'm just having a little fun. But yeah, we are going to be talking about the family tree today. So if you don't want to be spoiled, please don't watch this. But if you are up to date with everything or you just like talking about theory and discussion, then we're going to go ahead and get started with it. So this is the family tree as I've put it together based on what I think logically would make sense for everything in the game to kind of be true based on what you're told. But before I get into this, I just want to start with a little background about how did I start going down this whole family tree background and why was this something of interest to me. So when I was working on my Rikard video, I had all those images and all the video clips sort of just in my head thinking about what would visually go well together. And as I'm in that Mount Gelmir area, I find this dungeon called the Gelmir Hero's Grave. And in that dungeon, you can find this weapon called the Ringed Finger. And when I saw this, without even reading the text, I, I immediately linked it to, I linked it to Rikard's hands. I said, oh my gosh, that is the same finger as Rikard. And you can see in the video, in the clip, it's so intentional, it's so slow. It's like they really, really wanted to make that connection. But going back to this for a second, it says thought to have been cut from an ancestor as a finger creeper. And of course, the finger creeper, we've, we've seen those. They're the ones that crawl around and they have the rings on them. But I just thought this was crazy. Like, this was absolutely intentional. They wanted you to put these two items together like a shocking, wait a second, what? What's the relation here? Why does Rikard have this finger creeper finger? So I went on Reddit because I wanted to see if anyone else had found this connection in my excitement. Like, oh, does anyone notice Rikard has the same fingers as the, the ringed finger blade? And I didn't find anything regarding that, but I did find this post. Are the finger creepers the hands of giants? And this user says that the corpses of the fire giants in the mountaintops of the giants are very similar to the finger creepers and a lot of the corpses are missing their hands and their arms. So I immediately got on torrent and I went to go look because I just unlocked that area. So yes, when you go to that area, a lot of these preserved corpses, I was going to say statues, totally wrong word, they are missing their hands and their arms. And you do in fact see these giant finger creepers roaming around in the mountaintops of the giants. So I think that person was definitely onto something with that, with that comment. It, that comment at least put me in this area to begin with. So I have to thank that user for doing that because in that area, you get to see something else that we'll get to in a second but yeah so the finger creepers we found them all throughout the game to this point specifically the areas that i have seen them that have at least a lot of significance that kind of stick out like oh yeah i remember seeing them there are the carrier manor the carrier study hall mount gelmir and the mount tops of the giants and of course these three ones make sense with their relation to the Karian royal family. Mount Gelmir, Rikard is Rinala's son. So those three make sense, but this one did not make sense to me. And as you can see, I lost my runes here. I had to fight for those really hard. But yes, if you go in the mountaintops of the giants, you will eventually fight this guy. And he is so difficult. Oh my gosh, that was, that was an annoying fight. Oh, we can actually see here his hands are kind of looking like they're about to come off because of that little pyrotechnic show that he does. So yes, we fight the fire giant. Great boss, big, really, I mean, escalates the game if you know what happens after that. And he drops a remembrance when you fight him. And if you take that remembrance to Aenea, you can buy this item. Now this item blew my mind. This item made my jaw drop because when you read this, you will hopefully make the same connection I did. So the giant's red braid, hefty whip woven from the flame red hair of a fire giant. Every giant is red of hair, and Radigan was said to have despised his own red locks. Perhaps that was a curse of their kind. My jaw dropped when I read that. I said, oh my gosh, is Radigan a fire giant? Is, is that what all of this attention for his red hair has been? And you start to think like, oh, yes, the game constantly reminds you Radigan has red hair. Radigan's red hair. The flaming, furious red hair of his father. This is on Radon's mane. Radon and Rikard are both very proud of their pedigree as Lord Radigan's son. Radigan's glory burns as red as his hair. 
And also, it would explain why Rodon is so big. Just visually, like, look at that. The same kind of stature and size. And also, the face on the fire giant, the Riker's face on the belly of the snake. Like, visually, it makes a connection there. And also, Riker in his paintings, you can see he has these circular medallions, he has these corded braids. It kind of reminded me a lot of the fire giant's hair as well. But yeah, so I absolutely think that that moment where it mentions Radigan's red hair in relation to this is 100% supposed to... Okay, I won't say 100%, I'm not sure... I'm going to say 90, I am 99% positive it is supposed to be this big moment connecting these two together. I could be completely wrong. I am looking forward to someone disproving me if I'm wrong. But in the meantime, I thought that was a huge, huge reveal. Now, I do want to mention something that I think could possibly be very important. If true, this could possibly be the entire reasoning for the whole shattering to begin with, for the Night of the Black Knives. So Ronnie's feelings towards Radigan, we see that Reichard and Radon are very proud of their father's heritage. They work the red plumes into their knight's gear. Redmain Castle is bathed in red. Volcano Manor is red, glowing red. Really, really heavy on the red analogy, but you go to Ronnie's Rise, it's very cool. It's cold. It's blue. Blue is the complete opposite of red. Even with all the flaming red, fiery red hair, we have Ronnie, and she's very cool. She's very cold. She seems much more attached to her mother, much more inspired and proud of being Renala's daughter than she does Radigan's daughter. She even develops her own lunar sorcery kind of shadowing her mother who did the same thing in her youth her mentor was the snow witch which again is just that icy imagery that goes very much against the all of the red fiery imagery associated with radigan so if i'm correct in my theory ronnie resented radigan for what he did to her mother because of course when radigan leaves ronala ronala's heart is broken and she just falls apart she's no longer capable of being the head of the Rhea lucaria academy so i think ronnie really really resented radigan for what he did and i think it led to her wanting to kill her physical body you can even see here the red hair you know every Every child of Radigan has that red hair. It's so important. You can even see it's it's cut short. I didn't know if is this just time having passed over her corpse or did she really cut her hair short? Did she try and get away from being associated with Radigan because she hated him so much? If this theory is true, that would be huge. It would mean that is the reason why Ronnie wanted to break away from the greater will because she saw the pain that the demands of it caused on her mother whom she so clearly loves and she's very, very attached to. So, But that's my theory on this. I think Ronnie really despised Radigan. It led to her wanting to completely cut herself off of anything that was directing him to, to leave her mother and um, basically led to her killing her physical body. But if we put Renal and Radigan's family tree together as it's presented, it's going to look like this. We have Riker, Radon, and Ronnie. And those are the three children from Renal and Radigan's marriage. But now we have a wrench thrown in here. We have the wrench of the Empyreans. So just giving a little bit of refresher about what Empyrean is. Empyreans were born of a single god. And Ronnie tells you that only Ronnie, Mikula, and Melanie were Empyreans. And Melanie and Mikula were the children of Merrick and Radigan. And Renala is Ronnie's mother. So for, for these to make sense, so if for this one to make sense and this one to make sense, if you look at these three, you can make logical conclusions about the two of these. If I were to give you this on an assignment or, you know, if you saw this in math class, like for these to, to be true, what about these? have to be true so which means we have to go back to this family tree here because this would no longer make sense why is ronnie the only empyrean out of the three of their connections which brings me to my next theory that i have always thought that ronnie is the amber egg ronnie was the amber egg that radigan left with ronala when he left her and you see this in your fight with Renala in the library when you get to that point where Renala drops the egg and she's climbing towards it. You you hear Ronnie's voice. Ronnie says, you will not disturb my mother's slumber. And she conjures up this image of Renala in her most powerful, and you can really tell, like, 
yeah, Ronnie absolutely loves her mother here. She's stepping in to protect her. So I always felt like Ronnie was the amber egg. And also the way that Renala is cooing and talking to her and just loving on her. You can really tell like, yeah, this isn't just an amber egg. There's something else going on here. And then when you finish that fight, you get the great rune of the unborn. And it says the amber egg clutched by Renala. So why would this amber egg have a great rune? Hmm? If it was just just an amber egg. Also, Ronnie uses that same slumber language regarding her mother and herself. She's at one point, she says, I shall soon enter my slumber. And then you can see her, her doll is kind of sleeping. It's out of commission. I think Ronnie absolutely leaves her doll's body and goes to spend time with her mother. She's actually in that amber egg, just being with her mother, receiving her mother's love and warmth and kindness and support and just spending time with her because she loves her so much. I think that's very, very apparent. So that is the importance of the amber egg and why I'm very convinced that Ronnie is actually and was always that amber egg that Radigan left, which means that this is now what the family tree looks like. You have Ronnie coming from Radigan independently of Renala, which means she can now be an Empyrean. So if you take this family tree and you put it in the greater, bigger picture, this is what it looks like. And we get to that overall picture here with Ronnie, Mikkel, and Melania being Empyreans, and then Riker, Rodan, and Godwin, because they come from those unions, are not. Of course, this brings us to the next great question, which is Radigan and Merica, if they are one god, how does this work? How are two beings one god? And if you go to Lindell, you find that out in this big reveal. There is this moment where you do this incantation in front of the statue of Radigan, and it transforms into Marika, and it says Radigan is Marika, which is huge. This was supposed to be a shocking moment in the game where all these hours led up to this, this big reveal. So if you found this out, organically on your own I'm sure it was a very special I think a lot of people unfortunately were just very eager to spoil this in the comments and I'm not sure why because this was like a huge thing but anyways yes Radigan is Mark and you find that out um actually in the beginning of the game there's this scene of Merrick with the hammer shattering the ring and then it flashes and then it turns into Radigan. So it's kind of like it's always been there. He just wouldn't have known to look for that in the very beginning like that. It wouldn't have meant anything to you. Then there's the question of when did Radigan as America start? Because if we go back to the fire giant, the text of the fire giant, remembrance of the fire giant says that the fire giant is a survivor of the war against the giants and that America marked him with a curse after that war which means that if Radigan came from a fire giant, at what point did, was it after the war against the giants? Was it somewhere down the line? Did it happen before? Like, I, I'm really, really thrown by the, the connection to the fire giant with Radigan, just trying to make sense of that. I'm not really sure how that fits in. I do feel pretty confident, though, that before Radigan married Renala, that he had joined conjoined with Marika because of these two items right here. So the Mask of Confidence says when Radigan married Renala, he ordered the preceptors to don these masks to keep all of their matters private, which kind of shows to me it was very, there was something that shouldn't be repeated that might have gotten out. Renala might have even known about this for all we know. We don't know. And then the gold sewing needle, it says that Radigan brought this when he married Renala and this item alters demigod attire. Like, why would he need this if he wasn't already at that point a god? So I think these two items, now if we kind of create a very, very abridged timeline right here, so you can see Radigan and Renala wed, um, I think they would have had to form conjoined before this if he was at this point already a part of Marika. I just don't know. I'm just not sure because there's a lot of background here with the War of the Giants. Godfrey was already in the picture at that point. He was the one who led the victory against them. That's also when the Age of the Erd Tree begins. So at that point, was Radigan in the picture? Like how does his fire giant background relate? I, I'm just not sure. I'm not sure. Was this a sort of union of or did he have any say in this i don't know it's very confusing the radican is marketing is very confusing so if you have any input on that that'd be 
great. I did stick all the, the kids in here because I wanted to kind of visually see, okay, if we have this timeline of events, this is where I think they all kind of came into creation. I put Godwin back far here because of Godric. This gives Godwin's lineage like enough time to develop into Godric. And um, I think the, the rest of these placements kind of make sense. And just speaking briefly on Mikla and Melania's afflictions. So they both had birth defects Mikla was cursed with, or I should say cursed, but afflicted with eternal childhood and Melania from Scarlet Rot. And I was wondering if this was a side effect of one god splitting themselves into two entities and then procreating that way. Like that's, that's diluting. And I think this is the form of not incest, but this is supposed to show that that's not really the most ideal way for an Empyrean to come into being, and that's why they're they're cursed. But I I could be wrong about this. I could be wrong about ninety percent of this. I'm not an expert. I actively want people to prove me wrong if there's something out there that can be used against any of my theories. I trust me. I'm not I'm not sensitive about any of this. I want to end on one thing, which is Radigan's love for Renala. I do think that Radigan loved Renala. Now, when I got this item, it greatly, I read it a totally different way. So the Golden Order Greatsword was forged by Radigan to symbolize the tenets of the Golden Order. And you see this text on the bottom that says, Telltale signs betray that this was once the greatsword bequeathed to him by his first wife, Renala. Now, when I first read this, I thought, wow, what a jerk. He used his wedding gift and basically just painted over it and said, hey, look what I made. But I thought a bit more about it. And what I think the way I'm reading this now is Radigan loved Renala so much that he wanted to use, he wanted to incorporate a part of her, something that was special, something that he made. He wanted to use what she gave him as a part of that. Like I'm always keeping her close. I'm always keeping something that she gave me close to me. And that's how I read that. And it kind of completely changed the way I thought about it. Like, no, I do think that Radigan really loved Renala. I do not think he wanted to leave her. I think he was getting pressured. America and the greater will were telling him, this is what you have to do. You have to leave her. And so I think using her sword, using the wedding gift that she gave him in creating the golden order, I think that was supposed to be really, really significant. We also see the description for Radigan's sword seal at the very bottom. It says, solemn duty weighs upon the one beholden, not unlike a gnawing curse from which there is no deliverance, like solemn duty. It was his duty after Godfrey was banished to go back to Marika. It's not necessary that he wanted to, he had to. And I think that that text, like a gnawing curse from which there is no deliverance, I don't think Radigan wanted to leave her at all. I don't think this was in his plans and of course he leaves his red wolf to protect her uh, to protect Renala before you even get to fight her you have to go through him so I think there's just a lot of proof here that he loved her loves her didn't want to leave didn't want to have anything to do with it and that of course might go back to Ronnie's anger towards him even Mariel will tell you why Radigan what like it's a mystery why he would cast her aside like so that makes this 10 times more sad if that's true. If that is true, that makes this 10 times more sad, <laughs> which is totally fitting for this game. But I did want to mention that I thought that was pretty significant. So yeah, that is the family tree. That is the <laughs> sad, depressing family tree. There's nothing happy in this game. <laughs> Everything in this game that they give you just gets torn away. But I did do this for fun. I did turn them into their renaissance equivalents so some of these have some like ronnie juliet stabs herself i was very proud of that we have ophelia born she's in the water i was like oh melania born in scarlet rot so anyway this was fun because you don't really get to see their faces in the game you don't get to envision them in any other way so i thought ah, i'll put this together i'll do something cute anyways that's <laughs> that's the show. Thanks for watching everyone. And I look forward to your comments and let me know if you have any input or if something I said was so drastically wrong, definitely feel free to prove me, prove me wrong or prove me right either way. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.